If you're single, it's easy to get caught up in the thinking that you need a significant other to be significant. On today's episode, we're talking about how that couldn't be further from the truth and how you can be single and thriving and really the role that we all have in supporting the singles in our lives. My name is Emily and I'm the pastor of Epic Online and welcome to Epic Everywhere, practical teaching to help you grow in your faith no matter where you are on your spiritual journey. As we get started, I want to welcome anyone who's new today. I am so glad that you're here. We believe church should be fun and meaningful and that it should make a difference in your life and that's exactly what I hope you experience today. I don't know if you know this, but each week we have hundreds of amazing team members that gather in person and online to really make church possible. From taking amazing care of the kiddos to handling all of the graphics that you see or our amazing band and the chat hosts that welcome you online each week, we are so grateful for every single one of you who serve so that we can reach more and more people for Jesus. And coming up at the end of this month, April 27th, we're gonna be celebrating everyone who's on a team at our team celebration. This is a time when we celebrate all that God's doing in our city and really the people who are making it possible. So if you're part of a team, be sure to RSVP for that event. And if you're not on a team, we want you to be a part. You, yes, you. So how do you get signed up to serve or RSVP for the event on the hub? How do you get to the hub? You text in. So let's go ahead and do that right now. You can text in today by texting here to the number on the screen, or you can go ahead and scan the QR code. When you text in, you'll get a link to this week's hub. The hub is really the spot where we drop resources each week to help you get connected and to help you grow in your faith. At the top of the hub, you'll see a place where you can go ahead and let us know how we can be praying for you. You'll also see an opportunity where you can give today. You know, I wanna take time just to say thank you so much to every single one of you who gives. You play such an important role in the life change that we get to witness right here at Epic. So to be part of the joy of giving today, you can go ahead and head to the hub and give there or go to epic.church slash give. Well, right now it is time for today's message as a part of our series, Treat Yourself. So let's get to it. Hey everyone, my name is Paul and I'm one of the teaching pastors here at Epic. And we are in a series right now called Treat yourself. And it's based on this idea that how you treat yourself matters. And this idea is based on the second greatest commandment given to us in scripture. The first greatest commandment, according to Jesus, is this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And he follows it up by saying this. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. So loving your neighbor as yourself. And and if you think about it, it's like, why not just say, love your neighbor or love your neighbor really, 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 really well. Like, why is it love your neighbor as yourself? Now, I'm sure almost all of us have heard this before. It's a near perfect analogy. But if you've ever been on an airplane and they go through the safety procedures of what to do when the oxygen mask falls down from above, if your neighbor or the person sitting next to you needs help, whose oxygen mask do you put on first? Right, you put yours on first. The reason is the same reason why Jesus commands us to love your neighbor as yourself. Your ability to love someone else will always be limited by your ability to love yourself. Now, if you don't love yourself very well, you can still love other people. Like you're not completely incapable of love, which is why I think that this idea of like loving yourself well gets overlooked because most of us can still love other people reasonably well most of the time. But if we don't love ourselves well, if we don't love ourselves as God loves us, if we don't see ourselves as God sees us, we're 
in danger of burning ourselves out because we've poured ourselves out to the point of being empty because we don't know how to set boundaries for ourselves. We're in danger of not realizing how our insecurities can affect and impact our relationships because we haven't learned to love ourselves well. We can become critical, we can become controlling, we can become codependent, and the list goes on. And I think that we've all seen this and we've all experienced this that the way that we view and treat others really comes down to how well we view and treat ourselves. Because how we view and treat ourselves demonstrates what we really believe about God and about love. And so, we have this series, Treat Yourself. And this series isn't about selfish indulgence. It's about the importance of seeing yourself and loving yourself as God sees you and God loves you so that you can love others at your fullest, healthiest, most God-given capacity. And so today, here's how we're going to specifically think about this idea. How do you treat yourself when you're single? Now, we have a lot of folks at our church who are single, and one thing that happens is it can feel like Maybe there are tiers or even classes of people where the top tier is to be married and somewhere below that is to be single. Uh, or this like de debate develops like sometimes externally, sometimes just internally about which one is better. Is it better to be married or is it better to be single? And it reminds me of something I saw the comedian Jerry Seinfeld talk about. He says, when I was single, I had married friends. I would not visit their homes. I found their lives to be pathetic and depressing. Now, just in case you're not following here, he's a comedian, all right, he's joking, so relax. Uh, but there's also some truth in there in that there are probably some single folks who look at married people and are like, man, that looks boring. That looks boring, that feels restrictive. Like, I, I gotta check in with somebody else. I have to ask for permission to do stuff. I have to put the toilet seat down. No thank you. And then he goes on. Now that I'm married, I have no single friends. I find their lives to be meaningless and trivial experiences. In both cases, I believe I was correct. And so Seinfeld kind of highlights what it can be like on the other side of the fence, right? Married people, especially the longer that they've been married, can easily look at single people and be like, I am so glad that I'm not back there. Those problems are now beneath me. Like, I'm trying to keep other humans alive, right? I have kids, okay? You're just sleeping in every day and have all kinds of disposable income to use however you want. I'll cry me a river. Now, the problem that I have with Seinfeld is that he goes on and kind of like really does make the point that married people have real problems and single people kind of don't. Um, and, and I think that if we're not careful, we as humans have a strong tendency to sort of swing the pendulum like strongly in one direction or the other and usually too far. And I think what that can look like with the issue of being married or being single is that we can make one seem more important or more correct or more ideal than the other. And I think this can come from all kinds of places. Like this can come from culture, comes from pop culture. This can come from our family and their expectations. This can come from the friends around us. And unfortunately, this can even come from our churches. So maybe the first important thing that we can address today is this, that in scripture and with Jesus, there is no one over the other. In the Gospel of John, we, we see that Jesus himself says this, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And Jesus came to us so that we, we might have life and have it to the full. And nowhere does he say, or does scripture say, that life to the full looks singularly like being married or it looks like being single. Now, scripture does say that marriage is good. Also, the Apostle Paul teaches that being single is good. And so anyone can then cherry pick those passages and say, see, it says marriage is good, so you need to be married. Or, or, or see, it says being single is good, so we should stay single. You put them together in context, really, here's what it's saying. Either is good. Either is good. In fact, the Apostle Paul writes about this issue of being married and being single in 1 Corinthians. And uh, though he himself was single, and he says that actually staying single is good for several reasons, he says this of everyone. Nevertheless, 
Each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them, just as God has called them. Just as God has called them. So uh, another way that I might think about this is like, what does a full life look like? Or how do we get that, that life to the full that Jesus promises? It looks like following Jesus each and every day, right here, right now, in whatever situation or circumstance God has called us to. And if you're single, I know that that can mean so many things for you. Uh, you might be single by choice, um, and so like this is what you want and what you wanna do right now, and it works well for you, and you're like satisfied and content, and that's awesome, that's great. Um, and you might not be single by choice, and I think that's probably a, uh, for a lot of people in our church right now, you might be feeling that way, like you might be someone who wants to find someone, uh, wants to be married, um, you might be someone like who, who you, you have like a plan, right? And now you feel like the, the clock is ticking on that plan. Uh, you may be single because your marriage fell apart. Uh, you may be single, and it's not just that you're single, you're also a single parent, and so there's that as well. And you may struggle at times, or, or maybe even a lot of the time, with feeling lonely or feeling less than by comparison. Uh, you may be wondering at times like why you're single. Uh, you might be find, like, find yourself at times like frustrated or angry or heartbroken about that. You may be wondering why God hasn't answered or your prayers or why it's taken him so long or if he's doing anything at all about this. And all of that is okay. All of that's okay. All of that's very normal. And it's to be expected. And it's all part of this thing of, uh, you know, being human and, and living life. Um, author Albert Shue writes this, ultimately, singleness is not a problem to be solved by marriage. Rather, like marriage, it is an opportunity in which to follow Jesus. So being single, isn't a problem to be solved. It's an opportunity to follow Jesus in the midst of your current circumstances. And that might not feel super encouraging at first. Like It's kind of like when you go to the doctor because you have a cough or there's something you're dealing with and the doctor doesn't pro over promise anything or, or like have a miracle cure that like fixes anything, but they go, here, take this twice a day, eventually you'll feel better. It's kind of like that, right? I, I can't promise you that today all of your questions or all of your challenges or all the hardships associated with being single uh, are just gonna disappear. I can't promise you that you're gonna meet somebody and get married. I can't do that if that's what you want. But I do feel confident in this. You have a full life to be lived and meaningful work to be done here and now. I promise you that that Jesus has a full life for you and you don't have to wait for something else to happen down the road. It's not dependent on you finding someone or changing your status. It's not a half-life while you're single. You have the opportunity to pursue that here and now in your current circumstances, in your current situation, in your current status. And that's whether you want to be with someone or you don't want to be with someone. It applies to all of us. Jesus came so that we may have life to the full, not just for married people, not just for single people, not just for people who are dating, not just for people who are engaged, not just for people who say they're not looking for anybody, but you really know they are. It's okay if you're that person. I've been that person. Jesus came for all of us to have life to the full. And each one of us can pursue that right here and right now. So in the context of that idea, I thought that I would share today some of the advice born out of my own experience. Um, before I met Carly, my wife Carly, uh, I was single uh, into my 30s. Um, I experienced a lot of heartbreak, uh, a lot of starting over, a lot of mistakes, a lot of learning from mistakes, a lot of figuring things out, a lot of waiting, a lot of loneliness, a lot of, and also a lot of the good stuff that comes with being single, like independence and travel and eating as much Chipotle as I wanted every night of the week if I wanted to. Nobody's gonna stop me. Uh, so I try to come up with four of the most important pieces of advice that I tried to follow when I was single and that I would give to myself all over again. Now, before I get to those, a, a word to those of us who aren't single. I think it's very easy, especially the longer you've been married, to become a Jerry Seinfeld where we don't understand 
the single people in our lives, or we, we understand them less and less and less and less, or where we're tempted to dismiss their problems and their issues as more frivolous, less important than whatever it is that we have going on. But the truth is, uh, we all need each other. Like, we all need each other. Like, married people, we need the presence and the perspective of single people. Um, single people, you need the presence and the perspective of married people. And young people, you need the presence and perspective of older people. To older people, you need younger people. We all need each other. This is the beauty and the necessity of community. So if you're with us on YouTube today and you're not single, then I hope that you can be listening with a heart to understand and to encourage and to support the single people in your life and in our church. Our goal should be to be there for each other and to help each other follow Jesus in our circumstances right now, whatever they might be. And with that, the first piece of advice that I would give to pass me and to anyone else in the spirit of treating yourself is to give yourself the gift of practice. Give yourself the gift of practice. I have a saying that I use all the time and we've talked about it here before. Everything is practice. And this applies to everybody, married, single, it applies like, and it applies especially if you're single and if you're not looking for anyone, and then it really applies if you're single and you do wanna get married someday. Like no matter how awesome you think you are, some of you guys think you're really awesome, you know, that's okay, that's okay. You still probably have a long way to go to be the kind of selfless spouse and parent that your future people are gonna need you to be. Now, a lot of people, they kind of wait until they're married to practice being that person. And I say all of that practice starts right now. Every single day you have an opportunity to practice the type of person that you wanna become and the type of person that someone in your future needs you to become. So on the one hand, I think you should totally take advantage of all of the opportunities that being single provides. You know, just like the freedom that you have in your schedule or knocking stuff off your bucket list, seeing the world. You know, I would give you that advice, but I hope that you're already taking that advice, right? You're already just like seeing the world, you're traveling, you're doing the stuff that being single affords you to do, right? But please don't lose sight of the opportunity that you have right here and right now to practice becoming the best version of yourself to practice selflessness, and to find ways to do that even if, for example, you're living by yourself and you make all of the decisions for your life. Practice, for example, conflict resolution. Like if you have any room to grow in the way that you deal with conflict or adversity, and I'm betting that you do, start practicing how to do that better right now. You're gonna trust, you're gonna thank me for that later, okay? Trust me on that. Um, one of the big things that I, that I thought about when I was single was, what story could I tell that would make my future spouse proud of me? Like, in the way that I handle myself as a single person, in the way that I spend my time, in the way that I treat people, in the way that I approach my work, in the way that I treat people that I dated, even if it didn't work out, what do I want, what story do I wanna tell that I could be proud of and that my future spouse would be proud of when I tell them and when they find out about this part of my story? And you know what that really is? That really is like, hey, what does it look like to follow Jesus well? at this stage of my life. That's another way to say it. What does it look like to follow Jesus well at this stage of my life? And practicing that, to have a story that I'm proud of. It's all practice. Every day, every moment, everywhere you are. It's practice for who you wanna be, where you wanna go, and for some of you, who you wanna be with. So give yourself the gift of practice. The second piece of advice that I'll give to pass me and to anyone else is to give yourself the gift of growth. And this is actually really similar to everything is practice, but I just wanna say very specifically that when you're single, you have so many awesome opportunities for growth. Um, there's obviously like professional opportunities, like professional development, uh, growth in your career, right? But I think the most important opportunity that you have for growth is to grow in your relationship with God. In fact, the Apostle Paul, when he writes about why he recommends people to be single in 1 Corinthians, it's for this very reason. Uh, it's because he knows that once someone gets married, just by a very practical nature, your interests are now divided. You have like a whole other person 
that you have to attend to, right? But when you're single, you have this incredible freedom to, ex to explore and to discover what it looks like to have the closest possible relationship with God that you can. And this is the time to figure that out. And after that, I think there's also this incredible opportunity that you have to just grow um, as a person, to heal in your life from wounds that you might have. I think this would look like going to counseling or going to therapy. You don't have to wait until you're married and you're running into issues and issues are getting exposed for you to start this process now. Um, and I think this would look like discovering what healthy boundaries look like for you. This could look like finding things that just make you come alive, finding things that you love to do, finding things that give you life so that you don't burn out. It's one of the best things that you can pursue, this idea of growth, so that you're not just sitting on your hands and waiting for this like season of your life to be over. Give yourself the gift of growth right now to grow in your relationship with God to grow and to heal from the things that you need to be healed from, to find the things that will help you become the best version of you. Thirdly, give yourself the gift of financial freedom. I think this is so important. There are a lot of people, I think, who would jokingly say like, you know, I am kind of waiting around for like my sugar daddy or my sugar mama, right? And you're joking, but you're also not joking. And I think there are a lot of us, uh, when we're single, who are great at taking advantage uh, of that whole being independent part of being single, uh, having the freedom part of being single down. And, and what that usually looks like is spending our money however we want. And, and we still haven't learned, though, how to live below our means, how to budget well, how to have discipline in how we use our money. And, and we still have debt and or are still racking up debt. So in reality, I think that one of the greatest gifts that you could give to yourself, you know, regardless of whether you want to get married someday or not, and I would actually even argue, especially if you don't wanna get married, don't wait to give yourself this gift, is to figure out how to truly be financially free. And, and what I mean by that is this, you live below your means, you're out of debt, you don't owe anyone anything, and you are free now to give your money and to save your money and to use your money in a way that accomplishes your greatest values in your dreams. And if you are someone who wants to marry someone someday, you know what's super hot? Someone who's great with their money. Am I right? Am I right? And notice I didn't say someone who makes a lot of money because you can make a lot of money and be terrible with your money. Like, you know, and you know what one of the top sources of stress is in marriage, right? Yeah, it's money. And then maybe the top source of stress beyond that is also communication, which, you know, brings us all back to, you know, everything is practice. So practicing being great at your money and being great at communication, this is all for that fullest life that we're talking about. And then I also think that future you and if this is something that you want, your future spouse will thank you profusely for practicing those things. And I would say if you're someone who's single right now and you know that your finances are a mess, um, I, I just wanna encourage you here. Like I'm not saying that you're not worthy uh, of meeting someone or, or you're not a good, you know, you're just not a good person to date or whatever because your finances aren't perfect. You do not have to be perfect. You have to have everything together. That's okay. Um, you don't have to have everything together to meet someone who's great. But you, you, for you, should start to give yourself this gift now and to start practicing as soon as you can. Get on the right track as soon as you can for you, for you. Getting your finances together is exponentially difficult, by the way, uh, once you introduce another person into the equation. So now is the perfect time to get your finances on track. And finally, give yourself the gift of service. Give yourself the gift of service. This is such a unique opportunity that you have when you're single to follow Jesus, to have your life look like Jesus by giving of yourself, by sacrificing some of your time or your energy or your freedom or your money to serve the people in your lives. If you only live for yourself, this is kind of ironically, if you only live for yourself during this time, you're gonna be less happy and less fulfilled. 
Now, I think you're uniquely positioned to serve in a way that some of your married friends just aren't. Like, you might have the ability, for example, to get a call from somebody who needs help, and you're able to drop everything right then and there, no matter what time of the day or night it is. Not everybody can do that. Like, and you might have some more flexibility in your schedule to help someone, to serve someone. This could be in an informal way. It could be through the church that you might not have otherwise. And, and I would say this, if you're single and, and your schedule is so full right now that you have no time to serve others, then maybe this is a great opportunity to just kind of do an audit of your schedule, of like your daily calendar, the things that you're spending your time on, the things that you've committed to, um, and maybe clearing some of that out so that you can make room for things like this, things that you know will help you follow Jesus in a richer, deeper, more meaningful way. Because no matter what, a full and good life is going to be measured by how much you're able to pour out for someone else. Don't miss that opportunity. Don't miss that opportunity. How you treat yourself matters. So give yourself the gift of practice, to practice who you wanna be and where you wanna go, of growth, of financial freedom, of serving others. And don't forget, you have a full life to be lived, meaningful work to be done, right here, right now. Not somewhere down the road, right here, right now. Jesus came for you so that you could have life to the full, so that you could pursue and access that right now, right where you are, right here in this place and this time in these circumstances. And some of you, like I know that you're waiting for something that's coming down the road and that is okay. That is okay. But there's life to be lived now as well. So for all of us, regardless of our circumstances, we don't wanna miss the opportunity that we have to follow Jesus, to pursue the life to the full that he has for us in this place and time. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for all the people who are with us right now, all the people in our church, um, everyone in every circumstance, God, and particularly for those people who are single right now, God, whether that's by choice or whether that's by circumstance, God, you have called them to that place right now. God, I pray that you would help us to lean into that, God, that you would give us the patience, that you give us the ability to trust you in this time, to pursue the opportunities that you have for us today and right here and right now to live a beautiful, rich, and deep life that you came to give us. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks everybody. Such a great message, Paul. I hope all of you who are single found this super encouraging and also super challenging. I wasn't sure if I would ever get married. I was committed to following Jesus's plan for my life and I was okay if that included marriage or if it didn't. But if I'm honest, I didn't always do a great job submitting my time and my season of singleness to God. It was so easy to backfill it with, well, me. <laughs> Whether it was working ridiculous hours is to keep climbing that corporate ladder or spending time kind of checking off the things I wanted to do, I look back and I think, man, I wish I would have made that season less about me and a whole lot more about God. But when we know better, we do better. So hey, whatever you picked up from today's message to either help you thrive in your singleness or support the people in your life who are, let's not just be hearers of God's word, but let's be doers of his word. Let's put some of those things into action and really see all that God can do because of it. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Before you go, would you go ahead and just take time to like, comment, subscribe to this channel, and also take time to share this and encourage someone else. And I can't wait to see all of you right back here next week.